What's going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners. I told you all not to worry. It was going to get done. And freaking Joe Mixon gets his new contract today with the Cincinnati Bengals. That is right. A new deal has been inked for Joe Mixon. And he is now ready to get on the field here in 2020 and become one of the premier running backs in all of football. First off, the details just coming out on what the contract looks like. Joe Mixon agreeing to a new deal with the Bengals. Per Ian Rappaport, it looks like it's going to be four years, $48 million. The dude's going to get paid like a true running back one, and this is going to put him under contract for the next four five years because he's going to still be under his deal this year and the next year is when that deal kicks in so joe mixon gets his deal and people i've been telling you all off season long i am as high as i could possibly be on joe mixon i don't think there's anybody higher in the industry right now i have currently got him rock locked in as my running back three now and during the off season i tried to throw out as much information about joe mixon as i possibly could and I just want to refresh some of that information. Let me talk to you about why Joe Mixon is a solid pick this year for fantasy football and has all the upside in the world. There's a lot of arguments that go against Joe Mixon, but I guarantee that there isn't one as in-depth as my argument for you to draft Joe Mixon. So if you haven't had your draft yet, or if you are going to be maybe throwing some trades out pretty soon or you want to try and get Joe Mixon, let me remind you why Joe Mixon has a possibility of being one of the top running backs in the NFL this year. With Joe Mixon last year, now he did end up playing in 16 games. He gave you 278 attempts. 1,137 yards, which was 8th. His 278 attempts was tied for 5th. His four games of 100-plus yards was tied for fourth, and his 29 runs of 10-plus yards was seventh most. Now, I will tell you this. He did play 16 games, which was the first time in his career. The other two, uh, two previous seasons, he only played 14 in each season. And he did, he did, even though he played in week one, we're going to talk about here in a minute, he did have a slight injury in week one. And that could, could have led to some of his issues. But we're knocking Joe Mixon basically because of the first half of his season last year, right? Joe Mixon didn't have a great first half of the season. But you fail to overlook just how good Joe Mixon has been since entering the league in 2017. Since coming into the league, Joe Mixon has 2,931 rushing yards, fourth most during that time. His 693 attempts are fourth most during that time. He also has the eighth highest catch percentage which it, with at least 100 receptions among running backs with 80.6%. So if he gets more work in the passing game, which I'm telling you people is highly likely this year, the dude can do work through the air. We just haven't had that big of an opportunity to see it. If we can get back to around the 50-ish targets that we saw from him a couple of years ago, that's good for me. Get me those 50 targets and Joe Mixon is going to do a lot with them. Can his ceiling be higher though? Well, here's some of those deep diving stats again that I gave you with Josh Jacobs. His 52 tackles avoided as a runner last year was fifth most among running backs. And his 877 yards after contact was six most. Now we look at his 3.18 yards after contact per attempt. And that is a little bit on the lower side, but it was only 0.5 yards less than Barkley and Elliott last season. And part of the reason for that was that offensive line, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Because if the offensive line wasn't good, Joe Mixon was getting hit quite often a little bit earlier on. And not only that, but if teams were keying on that run a little bit more and trying to stay a little bit more focused on Joe Mixon, he was having defenders swamp onto him. Okay, And one stat that is really overlooked, and nobody I have seen talk about this, he had zero fumbles last year. He was one of only three running backs with at least 200 rushing attempts to do that. Joe Mixon 
takes care of the football. He gets the volume. He takes care of the football. We're just waiting for that ceiling ceiling to come around. Now, don't forget, the start to 2019 was a disaster. In the preseason, they had three injuries to their offensive line, including their first-round pick, Jonah Williams. Okay, So their offensive line was in shambles already before the season started. You lost two starting offensive linemen, and then your third one was a reserve. But that doesn't matter. You lose that reserve, you lose two starters, and now you have depleted the depth that you have built for your offensive line. On top of that, their starting left guard uh, last year, Michael Jordan, was the youngest player on their roster. Michael Jordan did not do that bad of a job last year, and he got better as the season went on. So now this year, playing at left guard, you've got Jonah Williams at left tackle, and you've made some other signings and draft picks to potentially reinforce your offensive line. The offensive line is going to be 10 times better in 2020 than it was in 2019. And another thing that nobody talks about either, his week one ankle injury in the first half against Seattle. He left, and he did not end up coming back after that ankle injury. And I've told people about it, and they're just like, ah, it obviously wasn't that serious enough because he played next week. But if you've listened to this channel and you've heard Dr. Ethan Turner, okay, he's our doctor here on the channel, talks about sports injuries all the time. He did a segment a couple of weeks ago with Jake, and he talked about how that ankle injury could have been one of the leading factors to starting off slow. Because there was a tremendous split in what we saw from Joe Mixon last season. Before the bye, which was week one through week eight, Joe Mixon averaged 12.62 attempts per game, 31.75 yards per game, and he did not score on the ground. Again, he injures his ankle in week one. His offensive line is a pile of garbage, and they're dealing with injuries. So Joe Mixon, both of these things working against him. And Dr. Ethan Turner even said this. Sometimes it takes those ankles a while. You can tape them up, but it's just going to take some time to get back to feeling fully healthy. And it's all about pain management and load management. So they get into the bye. He gets a week off. And now all of a sudden after the bye, week 10 through week 17, we see his attempts per game boost up to 22.12 attempts per game. His yards per game go up to 102.12 yards per game, and he scores five touchdowns in the second half of the season. The offensive line, they get to work together a little bit more. They're working in sync now. That helps him out. He's fully healed back from the ankle injury. It's not causing him any more pain. Now they can give him more touches. Now he can do more with the football. Now we see the true Joe Mixon from week 10 through week 17. And not only that, but they have added pieces. They have added pieces to help that offense this year. They drafted QB Joe Burrow. Love Joe Burrow. The guy's got all of the talent in the world. He should be a little bit more consistent than what we saw from Andy Dalton. They added wide receiver T. Higgins, another weapon on the outside that defenders are going to have to pay attention to. Pay attention to. You're not going to be able to stack the box against Joe Mixon, people. It can't happen. In free agency, they added guard Xavier Suafilo. Okay? They brought him in, another guard. He can play right guard for them. That helps solidify that offensive line and make it even better. And back from injury, we already talked about it. Jonah Williams is back from injury. AJ Green back from injury. Everything is setting up perfectly for Joe Mixon to have an incredible year in 2020. Now, just back to the contract for a minute. You don't pay running backs this type of money to give touches to Giro Bernard or Trayvon Williams or anyone else on the roster. You pay guys like this to be a true workhorse running back in your system. And I believe Zach Taylor is going to be doing that with Joe Mixon this year. Remember Zach Taylor, protege of one Sean McVay, who used Todd Gurley in the same way while they were together in Los Angeles. So I would not be surprised if he starts to take some of that this year. Yeah, last year, He didn't really give Joe Mixon all those touches to begin the season, 
But again, he had that injury in week one, that ankle sprain that not a whole lot of people talk about. And it was after the bye that he really clicked, started getting that volume and started becoming a much better overall running back in, in his efficiency, overall stats, everything like that. A lot of different things went into play to begin the year last year. And then at the bye, everything clicked for Joe Mixon. He's heading into the second year in this offense. He's healthy. The offensive line is going to be better. He just got paid, so we know that we're, they're going to use him. That's what's going to happen. And the best part about this contract is, is it really doesn't hurt the Bengals in any way, shape, or form. When Joe Burrow, when his contract's up and he's ready for his second deal, Joe Mixon's going to be coming off the books. you got A.J. Green that's going to be done in Cincinnati very soon. You've got other younger players around you that don't have any huge deals. So this makes a lot of sense for them to get a deal done with Joe Mixon because they know the upside is there. They know the possibilities are there. And from a pure standpoint of talent, Joe Mixon is one of the best running backs in the NFL. There isn't a running back that has a better overall set of tools than Joe Mixon, than Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley. And he is right there with those two. Now, will it change to fantasy football prominence this year? I believe so. And I believe so because of all the, all the stats, all everything that I just laid out for you in the video, everything points to him having a huge year. So I think next year when we go into our fantasy football drafts, Joe Mixon is going to be a top five pick. He might even be top three overall. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. If you appreciate that information, make sure you hit the like button for us. And on our road to 90,000 subscribers and 100,000 subscribers, you can help us out by hitting that subscribe button and tuning into the Fantasy Headliners for all of our new content. And of course, down in the comments below, let me know. Are you feeling Joe Mixon now? Freaking Joe Mixon? Hashtag let me know down in the comments below if you are hopping on board now and you're going to be making a run at him, whether it be in a draft coming up, a trade. If you're going to try and get them on your team, let me know in the comments down below. Headliner Nation, appreciate you all. Have a great rest of the day. Get ready for your drafts. Get ready for week one of the NFL season. And I will see you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.